It's 2005. Zhang Yan returns to Zhejiang in Hunan province, where he reported on the Japanese surrender in China 60 years before. Now he's been invited to attend the 60th anniversary victory celebration. He meets the Flying Tiger veterans and the Chinese pilots whom he first met here in 1945. At that time, this town was the Flying Tiger's base. Among the Chinese pilots who fought alongside their American allies was Zhou Shindian. From Indonesia came Peng Jiaheng. From Malaysia came Fang Shoyi. And from the Philippines, Lin Yishui. Other pilots include He Yangdao and Shen Jianyan. On November 9, 1949, they took part in an uprising of Chinese pilots and support personnel in Hong Kong, refusing to fly to Taiwan and joining the Air Force of New China. Among the people interviewed by Zhang Yan is Lin Yushui, one of the Chinese pilots in the U.S. 14th Army Air Corps. Lin and his wife receive a monthly pension from the Chinese government, and they are enjoying their retirement in Hong Kong. He flew 89 missions, shot down six Japanese planes and destroyed nine more on the ground, and he received 14 combat awards. He gives Zhang Yan a first-hand account of how he saved American pilots by shooting down Japanese aircraft. First of all, you yourself have to be brave and not afraid of death. I was ready to sacrifice. When we went into the air to fight the enemy planes, we were half American and half Chinese pilots. We protected each other in battle. Once I saw two Japanese planes hitting the plane of our American group leader, Captain Rouse. I immediately opened fire and shot down one of the planes. Rouse's plane was rescued and unharmed. I saved his life. Another time, a plane piloted by William Bernard was pursued by an enemy plane. I shot down that Japanese plane the same way I did the first time. In 2006, Lin Yushui was given a special honorary award by the U.S. government. Due to poor health, Dick was unable to come to China for the 60th anniversary victory celebration. He received newspaper clippings, photos, and videos mailed to him by Zhang Yan. Opening the envelope, Dick reads Zhang Yan's letter about the celebration in Beijing. One photo attracts his attention, a U.S. veteran representing the Flying Tigers, who was well received during the meeting. Dick picks up another photo, top Chinese leaders meeting with representatives of the Flying Tigers. President Hu Jintao said, in the battlefields of China, the Flying Tigers fought side by side with the Chinese people and army against the Japanese. The Chinese people are very grateful to the American people for their selfless support. We want the friendship between the Chinese and American people to continue to develop forever. Seeing these precious pictures, Dick can barely hold back his excitement. He watches the video of the Beijing ceremony. Sixty years before, 
Dick often heard China's national anthem, March of the Volunteers, while fighting in the war against Japan. Hello, John Yen. Dick Pastor calling from New York. I'm watching the 60th anniversary films and I couldn't resist calling you to let you know that we are alive and well and admiring the 60th anniversary. Wish we were there. Now seeing these pictures on television uh, and all that's come out of that period is a great reminder of the strength of the people. And they did it, and we're glad that they did it. That's all. Take care. Sai Jin, old friend. Bye-bye. Zhang Yan once again meets his American friends, some of whom are Flying Tigers veterans. They are here to attend the exhibition, The Memory of History, shown in several cities in America. Many ordinary Chinese came to this exhibition, which showed how American pilots risked their lives for China during World War II, and how the Chinese people braved danger and hardship to save American GI. murdered nearly 250,000 people in retribution for the Chinese helping a handful of American aviators get out and get back into the war. The Flying Tigers assisted us in the war, and we Chinese people also helped them. When they were in danger, Chinese villagers bravely rescued them. What a significant and wonderful friendship. Zhang Yan heard many such moving stories. He Romei, a Chinese woman, was thrown in jail because she helped to rescue eight Americans. She was tortured, but never turned over the Americans. She fought till the end and was finally rescued at the end of the war. Rescuing American pilots in areas under Japanese occupation was incredibly risky, but Chinese civilians did risk their lives to aid American pilots, and some died as a result. On one occasion, the Japanese believed villagers in the village of Jiangshan, Zhejiang province, were hiding Americans. To intimidate the villagers into handing over the Americans, the Japanese savagely bayoneted 27 defenseless villagers. For over half a century, Doolittle and the American airmen never forgot this sacrifice. One of them is this old Chinese woman, Zhao Xiaobao. The veterans regard her as a real heroine. Zhao Xiaobao has become the symbol of all warm-hearted Chinese people who once risked their lives to save American pilots. You, you and your two sons, you sit down, and you make this cold, and you drink this champagne, and remember your friends from America the way we remember you. What moved Zhang Yan the most was the moment when he saw an American pilot meeting again with a Chinese peasant who had saved his life 60 years before. John Carroll was a pilot. When he heard that the Chinese government was about to hold a commemoration ceremony in Washington, D.C., he came all the way from Alabama, bringing his two sons, two daughters-in-law, two daughters, two sons-in-law, granddaughters and grandsons, altogether 11 members of his family. Carroll said he had come to look for the Chinese villager who had saved his life. He wanted his whole family to meet this Chinese hero. The villager that Carol was so determined to meet was Luo Guangfu, a peasant from the village of Shanyang in Yunnan province. I always know about that. That's, that's the payment. I know. All my life, I know. 
How long have you not seen him? 50 or 60 years? Right, 60 years, yeah. On August 4th, 1946, Carroll, Captain Johnson, and another crew member, Robert Roller, were piloting a C-46 cargo plane. Due to mechanical failure, they crashed near Shanyang. The plane exploded, and a large fire erupted, engulfing the plane. The crew barely managed to get out of the inferno. Carol and Roller were seriously injured. Luo Guangfu and other villagers carried the Americans back to the best house in their village. The Americans were extremely well cared for, and three days later, the villagers carried them out again to safety. For six or seven, eight members of the village carry me 20 miles on a stretcher, you know, to get me out of there where the rescue team could get in. They're very, very good to me. For 60 years, Carol, Johnson, and Roller did not forget those Shenyang villagers who saved their lives. Unfortunately, Roller had passed away, and Johnson's physical condition was weak. But Carol came to the reunion on behalf of his fellow soldiers to fulfill their dream of saying, Thank you. When the announcer introduced Luo Guangfu to the audience, Carol, having waited so long for this reunion, could not contain his excitement. He got up immediately to hug the man who had saved him, with whom he had lost touch 60 years before. And Luo Guangfu immediately recognized his old American friend. I won't forget. I miss you very much. <laughs> I won't be, be here long. You will be here long. He said he's been dead for a long time. He said he's been dead for a long time. But you have your children, you have all the, we have all the younger, wonderful young, uh, wonderful younger generations. Yeah, You'll be around, I'll be around again. Uh, what about all the friends that you had? The spirit of the Flying Tigers and the deep friendship forged in war was handed down to a second generation in both nations. And today, this legacy of friendship between people on opposite sides of the world is being passed on again to a third generation. Every time Zhang Yan came to the United States to visit, his old friends were moved. We began to meet and see each other and share and, and I think that Zhang Yen was one of the unifying factors. <laughs> that when he was going to come, then we all had to be together. <laughs> and uh, began to compare notes over our various careers. We used to get together whenever I came to yeah. the So it, it again took Zhang Yen and his friends to bring us together as a group. Couldn't, couldn't treat one without treating the others. And that, that's really, good. Mm, again, yeah, that's the cementing of the group. Mm -hmm. 72. No, 72, uh, And we couldn't find probably it. You, you were the earliest one. These are American. It <laughs> yeah. was just a friendship that was really, it transcended politics and time. Yeah. And it, there was a compassion. There was a bonding. Right, a bonding and a compassion and an understanding. That's true. That lasted through all these periods in history mm -hmm. and, and continues today and with new generations. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited now. <laughs> Meeting our old, old friends since 1944, more than half a century ago, during the war. And I'm particularly glad to see that our friendship has continued to our second generation, even to our third generation. 
Zhang Yan invited Jean to China for Chinese New Year. His father, Ira, teaches at Beijing Luhe High School, which was built by American missionaries in 1867. Jean's grandfather, Eugene, was another old friend of the Flying Tigers. Zhang Yan, Ira, and Jean told teachers and students the great story of the Flying Tigers and about the enduring friendship between China and America. It was during the Second World War in the fight against Japanese aggression. His grandfather, Eugene Reich, was then a member of the Flying Tigers based in Kunming. I was then a student also in Kunming. We met and become close friends ever since. It has been 60 years now this year, 2004. Our friendship spans three generations. This photo was taken by Eugene at that time. Um, well, this is my first time in China. Uh, it's been very exciting. It's been a wonderful visit. It's been made that much more special by being uh, hosted and uh, welcomed by a, a good friend of my family, Zhang Yan. Sixty years ago, uh, my grandfather and Zhang Yan started a, a wonderful friendship. Ten years ago, I wrote a paper that told um, the story of their friendship. Um, a couple years later, I was lucky enough to renew the relationship between our family and John Yen's family. And it's with great joy and with great honor that I return um, to China to on John Yen's invitation for uh, a New Year celebration. So, Happy New Year to everyone. Chang and his wife have been living in Beijing for more than 50 years. Today is an ordinary morning in Beijing. Where are you now? In the park? We will join those people who come to the park to sing together. It's wonderful to live so closely together for more than half a century, to enjoy so many beautiful mornings. Returning home from morning exercises, Zhang Yan and Pei Yusen receive an email from Dick and his wife Naomi. Hello, Zhang Yan and Pei. Dick and I are writing now to tell you that since we returned from China, we no longer live in Queens, but have moved to Manhattan. Living in a house for the elderly together with people of our age, we are provided two meals each day so that we no longer need to cook or buy food. Living comfortably in a nice place and good environment with two parks, 
on both sides and near the Hudson River. We often go to Central Park for a walk and reading books, enjoying the easy life of the elderly. Being in such an environment and seeing the various activities of the men and women and the old and young, we feel great pleasure. I think you may also have the same feeling while enjoying yourself in the park in Beijing. No, you don't. Why not? Look at them coming. They're going the wrong way. But it's actually in the wrong way. Honey, I we know. want to get a cab right at that corner. No, right here, not there. Well, if you flag him here, he'll come around. You gotta flag him. Sometimes we also go to the theater near our place to listen to music, performance, or watch old movies. After dinner, we read newspapers together. Reading news about China today often brings back the joyful memory of our recent China visit. Now it's time New Yorkers get off from work and head for home. Another busy night in nearby Times Square. Thinking of you both, like you both, we are getting older, wishing you health and happiness. No matter how much time passes, we must never forget the sufferings of war, nor should we forget those distant friends who once came together to help each other. Future generations must always remember this eternal friendship. We must pass this moving story on from one generation to the next. Since 1980, when I first came to the United States, I have been invited by the U.S.-China People's Friendship Association to speak at their national convention to show the delegates the development of New China through the screening of documentary films. At one such convention in Houston, I met Mr. Zhao Jinglun, a specially invited speaker from China. He happened to be Zhang Yan's old classmate and they later worked together at the same organization in China. He told me how Zhang Yan has been following the new China right from the day of its founding, going through all the bittersweet years, braving rain and wind for over half a century. And he told me about the enduring friendship with his American friends from the Flying Tigers, stretching over more than 50 years. This moving story immediately fascinated me. I decided to make a documentary about Zhang Yan, I was so strongly drawn to this wonderful story. This was really what I wanted. Through this journalist's experience, one can understand what happened in China since the People's Republic was founded in 1949, and how the friendship between the Chinese and American people has developed. That's why I have been following, filming, and interviewing Zhang Yan for more than 10 years. Many people in China and the United States helped me to produce this documentary. In 2007, at 2 o'clock in the morning, the first English edition of this film was being completed. Zhang Yan and his wife were waiting to see it. I came and showed it to them and rushed to the airport, leaving Beijing for New York. On the way, what I thought about most was that Dick Pastor and his wife were eagerly waiting to see this documentary. Air China brought me back to New York.
On his return to New York's Kennedy Airport, De Fu Chen goes directly to the senior home in Manhattan, where Dick Pastor and his wife live. He is anxious to deliver an early version of the film you are watching to his old friend. But on the way, he learns that Dick has been hospitalized. At the hospital, Dick says he is very happy that he will be able to see this documentary in his lifetime. On the day Dick returned home from the hospital, De Fu Chen immediately brought him the English version of this documentary. His long-awaited dream has come true. Friends used a home camera to record this powerful moment. Which led to their world-renowned nickname, the Flying Tigers. He was interviewed by the American network, NBC. Captain Claire Chennault and the crack pilots of the ABG, the American volunteer group, rushed to China's defense. Inspired and moved, Chinese citizens described Chenault and his ABG as tigers with wings, which led to their world-renowned nickname, the Flying Tigers. No, it's been a long time. Many, many years. Sixty years. And here we are. Good. Come and sit by my side if you need me. Do not hasten to bid me adieu. Just remember the Red River Valley. Uh, immortalized this chapter in his life, much of which happened before I came around. Uh, certainly the beginning of it before I came around, and to be able to see firsthand or secondhand the strength of those connections that were made all the way back in 1944. So a wonderful thing. Very good. Excellent. Very moving. <laughs> um, I thought it was great and um, very inspiring, and it gives me a lot of hope. And I want to go to China now. That I enjoyed it immensely, and I'd heard this story in pieces, and now it all came together, and I kind of get the, the whole storyline and the sequence of events. The music was beautiful, it was very touching, and I think it's a wonderful documentary. I found it moving beyond words. The reminiscence Reminiscence is a powerful force, and we who live, uh, I mean, we are surrounded by old friends, and it's a a pleasure to see them, to hear them, to be associated with them. And this is, I think, a very important recording of an important part of our lives. And I appreciate the work that went into it beyond words. Thanks a lot. Deeply mourning my dearest friend, Dick Pastor. You have made great contributions to developing U.S.-China friendship. You will forever live in the hearts of the Chinese people. And the China scene was a warming one. People, we fell in love with them. They were hardworking, they were diligent, but they were pleasant, they were congenial. They greeted you. Now, it is the world's most populous country undergoing one of the most dramatic changes that a society can ever undergo. I would like the world to know that my wife and I have 
been ardent supporters of the Chinese people for many, many years. We will retain our friendship with the people of China as long as we live. Jiang Yan's friends from the Flying Tigers have passed away, one after the other. They include Zhou Shendian, Fang Shouyi, Peng Jiaheng, Lin Yushui, and the Chinese nurse Huang Huanxiao. Zhang Yan felt the pain of losing his friends one by one. And the most painful was the passing of Pei Yushen in 2009, his dear wife with whom he shared joy and sorrow for more than half a century. Zhang Yan, now nearly 90 years old, continues to work promoting understanding and friendship between the American and Chinese people. About the philosophy of life, for me the most important thing is to keep a clear head and a balanced state of mind. Happiness lies in contentment. If you are always happy, you will have good health. This is my personal experience. He has decided that for the rest of his life, he will concentrate on collecting all the Flying Tigers materials available so that people will always remember history so that they will love peace and value friendship. We were invited to attend the centennial anniversary celebration of our alma mater Tsinghua University in April 2011. We both attended the ceremony. For such a long time I experienced bittersweet years, full of joy and sorrow. But I am very happy to see the new era, the new look of the world, and the big changes happening in China. We spent more than 10 years recording these events, following the people who changed history. Sincere friendship is the most beautiful feeling a person can have. So this is a story that will never end. To produce this documentary, Defu Chen has flown back and forth between New York and Beijing more than 30 times. And today is the start of another journey. station is San Yuan Chow. San Yuan Chow is a transfer station. Passengers for the Airport Express, please prepare to get off. We just celebrated Zhang Yan's 90th birthday. All of us, including those at his workplace, China Today magazine, wish him a happy birthday.
the legendary experience of Zhang Yan and the moving story of his friendship with the Flying Tigers is now being told to a new generation. We continue to follow Zhang Yan's footsteps and film the story in the U.S. and China. So watch for the sequel to this documentary. We'll see you again.